Hello everyone and welcome. Today I will begin painting the first miniatures in the Shadows Over Camelot series. And we will begin with the catapults followed by the three items Excalibur, Lancelot's armor and the Holy Grail. First we give all the catapults a base coat of burnt sienna. This takes quite a lot of time because there are lots of nooks and crannies to get into. And it also is difficult because you have to wait for one side to dry out before you can do the other side. The next step is a dry brushing of rock sienna in order to highlight the wood grains that the um, miniature has. This will also make it uh, pop out and it will break the uniform color of the raw of the burnt sienna. Again, this is another one of those lengthy processes because you have to leave only a little bit of paint at a time. The wood grain is very delicate and if you take too much paint at the same time, you're just going to fill it and all that uh, burnt sienna is going to be wasted underneath the raw sienna and it will, it will not have the same natural look that I was going for. I realized that I enjoy painting the details much more than uh, the dry brushing, over brushing and uh, blending techniques. This is the most fun part, it really makes the miniature stand out and all the details are actually my favorite part of painting miniatures. Now the ends of the logs I did with lead belcher as they appear to be a metal reinforcement. So yeah, each and every end of the catapult gets this lead belcher treatment and then I will come back with um, burnt sienna to uh, fill in the center of the pillar so that uh, it's even more detailed. The same lead belcher I applied to the swivel arm as well as the throwing cup of the catapult. And a little bit on the wheel caps. For the counterweight of the catapult, I decided to go with a technical paint. I uh, used Astro Granite 
Castrova, I think that's what it's called. Uh, it's a beautiful paint that has a bit of a rough texture in it, and it really makes it look like um, carved stone. In the end I decided to paint the wheels with burnt umber to make them stand out from the rest of the catapult. I think it uh, came out better, uh, otherwise it would have been really weird to see uh, the wheels the same color as the rest of the body. Next I painted the Holy Grail and I wanted to go really simple for this one. I just used the same as the granite for the pedestal and uh, just left it at that. Uh, I was initially going to try and dry brush a lighter color over it to give it a more a different look but uh, in the end well, I think with the, the light coming off and from different locations it still looks downright cool and it actually highlights all the edges by itself any light will just simply do it as for uh, the chalice I initially thought about painting it gold but then I uh, remembered a bit of um, reference from uh, Indiana Jones so yeah it wouldn't have been gold so I decided to go with a copper color Just a few minor fixes from where the paint accidentally spills and it's done! This was really easy to paint, but then again it's a very simple miniature. <laughs> And now it's time I moved on to Excalibur, the sword from the lake. And I wanted to go with blue for the water, of course, but I wanted to try my first hand at wet blending. So I used multiple colors of blue. I'm sorry, I don't honestly remember what they were all called. Uh, and they're not from Games Workshop, they're from that uh, box that I have with the uh, tube colors so yeah but still it was so much fun to um, mix all of them and see them blend in between all of them and I used three colors for wet blending in three different um, overlapping layers and then I used a fourth color to dry brush over everything and make it all merge sort of
and the reason I went for these vibrant blue colors is um, I know they're not very realistic but it's also supposed to be a magical lake where you know a fairy creature lives so it wouldn't have been uh, murky or anything like that instead it should have been crystal clear and that's what I wanted to go with all the bright colors and the uh, lovely waters So stippled a bit of darker blue here and there to give the impression of swirling water. Once everything was dry, I took up the fourth blue color that I mentioned and I dry brushed uh, so that only the swirl edges would uh, catch the new color, giving it, like I said, a uniform look while still retaining uh, most of uh, the colors that we were used initially and also that lovely green. And on to detail work. For the skin I went with a very very uh, light color and I think it's flayed one flesh. I know I know but I don't name these colors. Eh. For the scales on the armor on the hand, I decided to go with the rune fan steel. The same for the blade and the tiny uh, hilt and pommel of the sword. I decided uh, to go with a gold color instead of um, copper as I usually do for most of my swords. This is supposed to be the most noble of weapons after all.
I really hope you guys are enjoying the new uh, focus feature that I found uh, on a new app on the phone and I'm really happy that now you can actually see what I'm painting instead of a blurry mess but let me know if you guys uh, want me to uh, if you have any other suggestions of how I can improve my filmings One of the reasons that I chose not to go with any uh, washes whatsoever for uh, this miniature is because, again, it's coming out from a lake and it should, should be pristine and absolutely clean and sparkling. So I decided to leave it out without any uh, washes, such as uh, Agrax Earthshade or Null Oil. Everything is supposed to be incredibly shiny. Finally, we get to Lancelot's armor, the most complex of these items. I began by painting the armor rack with raw sienna and burnt sienna. And then I painted the sword scabbard with Rossian again. And then I will follow up with oh, burnt umber for the leather elements, a bit of lead belcher for metallics, and copper and um, more burnt umber for the sword hilt. While I waited for the scabbard to dry, I decided to start working on the shield. And for the shield, I went with burnt sienna for the wood. I think I can say that I've learned a little bit about um, thinning down my paints and where it is better to thin them down and where it is better to have a better consistency to them. Especially for details such as this with all the uh, Rossi and I wanted to paint the wood scabbard and I wanted it to go basically underneath everything so you needed a very thin paint and then when I painted the leather straps I didn't I didn't need the part number to flow very well because then it would have spilled over and all the raw sienna would have been covered up so this is what I've learned <laughs> so far 
This is actually one of the things that I've learned so far. I figured the same leather would have been used when the sword was made to coat both the scabbard and the sword hilt, so I went with the same burnt tumbler for both. While I waited for some of the other elements to dry out, I decided to start working on the gauntlets and other bits of armor that uh, were strewn about the miniature. And I did those with Drunfang steel, again, so that they all be shiny. Because I wanted to have a bit of a difference between all of the metal elements on the miniature, some of them, such as the metal parts on the scabbard, I did with lead belcher, whereas the armor and the uh, gauntlets and the greaves are all painted with uh, runefang steel, which is lighter than uh, lead belcher. And you can clearly see the difference. The same lead belcher was used for the trim of the shield as well. Here is an example of a little too thinned out paint. The, <coughs> the Rune Lord Brass I used for the sword hilt was a little too watered down. Fortunately for me, I was lucky enough that it stayed in place and didn't go all over the rest of the sword. Thank you. 
And now I got the consistency just right for the pauldrons for the Rune Lord Press. While some colors need to be different to have to show different materials, some colors need to be the same across different um, parts of the miniature in order to bring it all together. And with the pauldrons done, it is time to get working on the cape. I used the same dark blue I used for the deep water and the Excalibur mix. And I will have to do a few coats because it is very thin down. And this is a good thing because it gives the fabric a lot of um, multiple tones using the same color. Wherever it pools, it is darker. So all I have to do is just uh, work the paint and make sure that it doesn't pull in the wrong places. And it is a bit of a long process and you have to do multiple coats, but it's fun, especially when the final result looks amazing. When just one simple coat and one color, no need for a, a secondary dry brush or any other color tones. From other videos that I saw on the internet, it, it seemed that a very diluted paint sort of uh, handles like a contrast paint. Now, I'm no expert and this is basically an open question. Is this true or not? Feel free to uh, answer in the comments below. As I mentioned, the armor is done with runefag steel and because I don't want this to be fully shiny and I also want to add uh, contrast, contrasting lines uh, I will actually be washing this later on with no oil only the recesses the same is true for the helmet A bit of Rune Lord press for the ornament on top. For the feather I went with ivory, followed by a wash with Agrax Earthshade, and then a re-highlight with more ivory several times, because it looked way too dirty without uh, bringing everything um, back up to color. But in the end, it looks really, really good.
and now it's time for magic in a bottle non oil just look at how it makes that entire armor pop with just a few lines just high just undershadowing all of the armor panels And this brings us to the end of the very first painting video in the Shadows Over Camelot series. I will let you enjoy the final shots, and if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and share it with a friend.